Hello everyone, I am Cool Guy. welcome back. Today's review is an unprecedented third review in a row for a sidearm, because if you haven't used them, all I can say is that they're doing really well and they put in a lot of work in both PvE and PvP. Now the goal of these reviews is to look at roles and find ones that can work for you. This sidearm is top shelf that we're going to be talking about today, it has a lot of potential. It's possibly a top 5 or top 10 primary, and I don't say that lightly, because you can do a lot of different things with it. I also do have some controller tips and reminders as well. This review brings us to the Tangled Shore Obelisk to take a look at the Kinetic Aggressive Tuber Sidearm, Breach Light. Activate this obelisk and at the end of the sundial, this is going to be your reward. You can also do bounties. And later on in the season pass, you're going to unlock the ability to have a second perk roll in the second node. That way you have an option. These two burst sidearms in particular feel a lot better now than they ever have before. And again, sidearms got a PvE buff to minor and major combatants by 16%. And sidearms as a whole got a target acquisition buff. Now all of them feel better, but these two burst in particular, after that target acquisition buff, feels like these are one of the archetypes where you feel it the most. Because I had a lot of issues in the past with these, with the range that they had and the hit detection that they were getting, they're much better now. I'll put the base stats on the screen, there are only three aggressive burst sidearms in the game, the Kinetic Breach Light and Smuggler's Word, and the Energy Death by Scorn. The stats are all right in line with each other, nothing really pulls away from the other two, or the other two aren't so dominant in a category that Breach Light is considered just lesser or obsolete. The only thing about it is it has a recoil direction of 82, but on these, that isn't too bad, we can fix that. The base recoil tends to the right, and with this weapon, with how you want to use it in the Crucible, you do want to clean that up. So in the background, I'm just hitting the trigger over and over, this is its base recoil. Coil. Look at how much it's flying up into the sky with no recoil compensation. So first off, don't be worried that it goes that high. Because with these, you have to apply down tension with each shot. To keep them straight, you have to level them out. Now a mouse and keyboard, that's not as exaggerated as console right here. It's much easier. So when taking into consideration the barrels for this thing, when you add on chambered, extended, arrowhead, those change the recoil direction. It helps these get a lot straighter. And at base for the Crucible, you do want to add on a counterbalance mod out of the gate to kind of stop that bounce intensity to the right, that way it's going to be a little bit straighter. Eventually it's going to start trailing to the left though. So for the first time in a long time, whether you're playing with mouse and keyboard or on controller, on PC or on console, I do recommend that you spec breach light for range. It's going to kind of depend on you, the player though, if it's too much, if it bounces too much, but when I get into the PvP section, I'm going to show you why you're going to want range over stability, regardless of where you are, because usually MNK goes for range, controller goes for stability, but not necessarily with this sidearm. For the barrels? Arrowhead Break, Chambered Compensator, and Extended Barrel are going to be my top three, but Hammer Forge Rifling Full Bore and Small Bore are going to be okay. Now the perfect combination for vertical recoil in the Crucible is a recoil changing perk like Arrowhead, Chambered, or Extended Barrel with a Counterbalance mod. This is ideal. Mouse and Keyboard, you can get away with something like Full Bore. For the Magazine, for PvE, you want a Magazine perk or Accurized Rounds. Now the best pound for pound mag option is Appended Mag, there's no downsides to it. Others are going to be Extended Mag, Tack Mag, and there's also Alloy Mag for fast reload when the mag is empty, but your main options for the Crucible are going to be Accurized Rounds or Steady Rounds. Accurized grants plus 10 to range, Steady Rounds plus 15 to stability, and negative 5 to range. But again, I do recommend that you go Accurized right here, and we'll talk about it more in the PvP section. There I'll walk through my findings, my philosophy behind that, regardless of whatever platform that you're on. And after we get through all the perks, we're going to do a summary for PvE and PvP usage for Breach Light, and after that, we'll get into our perk combination. So in the first node, first up is Demolitionist. Top tier for it. As you get kills, you get grenade energy. Really good for any build, regardless if you're going for a grenade build or not. And when you throw your grenade, it refills the magazine from reserves. We have Outlaw. Precision final blows greatly decrease reload speed. It's top tier. We have Underdog. Gets a boost to reload speed as your health gets lower. Now on Breach Light, depending on what you pair it with in the second node, Underdog can actually work. Really good in PvP because you're going to be low health a lot. And you can pair that with something like, let's say, Multi-Kill Clip. And that's going to be good in PvE as well. That way you can get that reload load as you're taking damage. Under pressure, once you spend half the magazine, the bottom half gets improved stability and accuracy. It's a good pick for PvE and PvP. The accuracy is the big thing about it, keeping the bloom cone tight, but as far as the stability goes, on screen, this is controller on console, the first six bursts at the left are going to be regular, and the bottom half is going to be the right with under pressure. It does help a little bit. Threat detector, increased stability, reload, and handling as enemies are in close proximity. Now this is going to be up to the player. On this sidearm though, I really liked other perks over this one. Threat Detector is good though. When it comes to perk combinations paired in the next node, I would take other ones over this one. Lastly, we have hip fire Grip. Now, I've been talking about the strength of a sidearm for the past couple videos, your freedom with movement in the air 
using your vertical space or on the ground. At base, these are also very accurate from the air and while in hip fire. In the hip fire perk states, you get increased accuracy and stability when firing from the hip. The clip in the background is using a controller on console. Hip fire is a great PvP perk if you decide to do that. That's also going to take into account if you do hip fire sidearms or if you're up in the air, things like that. So it's going to be up to you. It does work well though. Now in the second perk note, we have Vorpal Weapon. Elite perk for Breach Light. Very good. Increased damage against bosses, vehicles, and guardians while their super is active. I do believe that Breach Light is the best kinetic Vorpal weapon currently. More than Patron of Lost Causes, more than the Steel Feather. And again, this sidearm in PvE packs a punch with that buff. It really does. I'll get more into this in the perk combo section, but Vorpal Weapons in PvE deals 15% more damage to a yellow bar, meaning your majors are your bosses. Now a major or boss spec can be added and these can be combined together. So it does 15% more damage, but if you have a Vorpal Weapon and let's say a major mod versus a major, it stacks, you're doing 24% more damage. Same goes for a Vorpal Weapon that you're using on a boss with a boss spec added. In PvP versus a super, you deal 50% more damage on average. It depends on what super they're in, things like that, but sometimes it could be up to almost 60% more damage depending on the super. We have Quick Draw, very good perk for the Crucible. Multi-kill clip, it's our first damage dealing perk. Reloading grants increased damage based on the number of rapid kills made beforehand. So you can get three kills, reload, you're at a times three stack. And at its max stack, you do 50% more damage than base. So it's very good on the breach light. Osmosis, using your grenade ability, changes its weapon's damage type to match your subclass until you stow it. So it's very good for match game. It's very good for a Nezirak Sin Warlock. We have Elemental Capacitor. You can increase stats based on what subclass that you're on. So Solar for reload, Arc for handling, Void for stability. Now, I tested this perk in length on breach light. It doesn't work well with it. There are way better options. Finally, Rampage, kills with this weapon and stacks damage. So it goes up to a times three stack and at a times three stack, you deal 33% more damage than base. Now a side note, multi-kill clip at a times two stack is the same as a rampage times three stack. So 33% more. Before we get into the perk combinations, again, let's briefly talk about how Breach Light performs in both PvE and PvP, and this helps kind of show what perks you should be looking for. In PvE, it's very impressive. At base, Breach Light, it shreds. I mean, it shreds through adds. Lower tier activities, it just one-shot bodies everything. Now, in higher activities, it's near the same, sometimes a little bit more, but even versus majors without any damage dealing perks, it does well. And keep in mind, you're at a distance, you're about 15 meters out, but when you start throwing on some sort of damage dealing perk, it really elevates it and real talk it's very close to recluse level ad clear it mows through enemies in the crucible before we get into those perk combinations there are some things to understand at base, it does 45 to the head, 33 to the body. Its optimal TTK is the slowest out of all sidearms at 0.73 seconds. Now to hit that 0.73, you need three criticals and two body shots. So basically three bursts and a burst comes out two bullets at a time. Its body TTK is actually the fastest out of all sidearms at 0.83 seconds and that takes six total body shots. And this brings us full circle, coming back to talk about range. The more range that you have, the better fall off, the better aim assist at range, and so on. What we need to realize is that these are extremely easy to use. Landing shots is more important than accuracy, because the TTK is going to be a five bullet or a six bullet kill. The five bullet is three head and two body, and the six bullet can be plainly six body shots. So you really shouldn't be worrying about straight precision. These are relaxed, and that's where the range comes in. Because with breach light, it's more important important to get the recoil straight up and down with adding let's say chambered compensator and a counterbalance mod then adding stability because the burst needs to be controlled after every single shot you're basically holding a little down tension while you're shooting this thing to keep it level it has a base range of 16 meters it's still doing 45 to the head as you step back it goes to 44 and so on now with a max range roll like right here we have full bore accurate rounds and a max range masterwork, the fall off is 17 and a half meters. So even up to 24 or 30 meters, you can still land pretty decent shots. And remember, 17 and a half meters and in with that max range roll, all you need to do is land three bursts on someone. They could be anywhere. And that achieves that 0.83. And as you're doing that, that 0.73 TTK is gonna happen because you're gonna land some headshots. It's very relaxed. Controller players, past fall off, let's say 20 meters to 30 meters, don't hammer the trigger down because it loses all of its aim assist. It gets away from you. Instead, you need to pace it. And this isn't, you're going to be at 25 meters, let's have a duel. This is going to be, maybe they're low health, you're going to start taking shots at them. You need to pace it, let it shoot, let the recoil settle, and then fire again. That way you get that accuracy cone back and the aim assist back on. But the main thing to remember in the Crucible is it's super relaxed. It's a five bullet or a six bullet kill. And that six bullet kill, can be all body shots. 
For the perk combinations, in the first node, Demolitionist and the Outlaw are going to kind of run the show for me as we're going through this, and your perk pairings with the second node are best utilized with these two. Now if you do like Threat Detector, you can add that in. If you like Underdog, and so on. Of course, if you love it, do it. The first perk combination for PvE, Demolitionist or Outlaw with Vorpal Weapon. I was impressed by how much this thing shreds through regular ads and red bars that actually not having a damage dealing perk didn't hurt that bad, so I tried Vorpal Weapon. Now with Demolitionist, you're getting more grenade energy and refreshing the mag when you throw it. Outlaw wise, as you're shredding through ads, you get a faster reload. The Vorpal weapon part though, since it does so well versus red bars, that brings us to majors. Now the one I love using is Demolitionist Vorpal, and I run it with a major spec. We're getting crazy out here, we're running a major spec on a sidearm. That way I'm doing 24% more damage than base. I really like the feel of it versus majors. Now it was brought to my attention actually earlier today that on January 10th, Forbes had an article that mentioned my video on Traveler's Judgment and its perk pool. And with that one, there's a card at the top of the screen, there's a link down below, but again, it has Disruption Break. When you break an enemy's shield, you get a debuff and you deal 50% more damage. Now, in this case, you deal 50% more damage from Disruption Break, but you also have Vorpal and then you have a Major Spec. So with these yellow bars, you shred them down. You can use any Energy Disruption Break weapon, that could be Kindled Orchid, Uriel's Gift, the Season's Sniper Rifle, is a high impact sniper, it can also roll a disruption break, and it's actually the only sniper in the game that can roll that perk. It's really good, and it's really fun to use even without disruption break. Most of the time I haven't been, I've just been using it to clear through ads, and when majors come, I have warp a weapon with the major spec. The next perk combo is the damage dealing part. It's going to be demolitionist or outlaw with rampage or kill clip. All interchangeable, but again, it gets through ads so easily, all you're really doing is just elevating this thing, it's top tier stuff. And between rampage and multi kill clip, I found that I actually liked rampage a little bit more. It's a base Basically, always keeping a multi-kill clip times two stack, not worrying about how many ads I killed, not worrying about reloading. However, if you do go with multi-kill clip for PVE, it's one of the best ad clears. Getting 50% more damage, it is on a timer though. But remember, you can get a kill, reload, get a kill, reload, and the best way to use it is to do that. That way you're using a times one stack to get a times three stack and so on. It's top tier in PvE. Now for the Crucible, here's the deal. These are very relaxed as we went through. At base, they do well because of that. Just straight Breach Light does fine. My favorite thing about it is using it with Vorpal Weapon versus Supers. The damage numbers vary, 34 to the head, 37. The damage is so good, it does 25 to the body, so 50 per burst, so that means it's going to be a 4 burst to the body. It's very lethal, do not sleep on Vorpal Weapon on Breach Light. And the background is multiple clips of Breach Light with Vorpal Weapon in the Crucible, and these are just the ones that I captured, there's probably 20 or 30 more. Kind of going back, I do believe it is the best kinetic Vorpal Weapon currently, and it's very good in the Crucible. It's so good that when a super's coming at me, I want this more than a fusion. I want it more than a primary. If at a distance, of course, taking a sniper shot at a super to just lay him down is ideal, but most of the time, supers are coming right at you. And all I can say is that if they're hunting you down in their super while you have this Vorpal Breach Light, they mess with the wrong dude. Because landing just one burst does 68 or 70 damage. It's massive. So you can three burst or four burst them. And once I saw the numbers at base of just how relaxed it is, meaning you just have to land shots, five or six bullets max, I started seeing the real benefit of Warple, because it saved me in countless situations, countless times. I do prefer it over Rampage, and I prefer it over Multi-Kill Clip, simply because at base, it, it can duel well, it's very relaxed, 5 or 6 bullet kill, and when I need it the most, is going to be versus a super, and it performs well. And this is a sidearm, so I use it normally, as I would all game, I use my distance, my vertical space, and every point during a game, a super comes at you, and this is the weapon you want as they're approaching. I use Demolitionist and Vorpal Weapon, I also have a Hipfire Grip Vorpal, and most of you are going to get more out of Demolitionist, it all depends on how much you hit fire and how much you're in the air, things like that. The next roll for the Crucible is going to be Quick Draw, and it's always going to be top tier. And PvP wise, you can pair it with anything in the first node really, it's going to be up to you and your playstyle. Next is the Damage Dealing Perk, it's going to be Multi Kill Clip, and the main thing to remember is it chains off of itself, so you can get a kill, reload for a times one, get a kill, reload, and I just want to continually say that, that way you do that and know that, because at a times one it deals 53 to the head and 34 to the body. This means you can get a four bullet kill with four headshots or three headshots in a body, so it's a two burst. If you do that, you get a .5 TTK. For the MKC rolls, Drop Mag can also come into play, Outlaw, Demolitionist, or Hip Fire can pair with Multi Kill Clip. And lastly we have Rampage, those same perks, Outlaw, Demo, or Hip Fire can pair with it, but I would personally go with a Vorpal or a Multi-Kill Clip over Rampage. It's going to depend on your playstyle, pure lethality, it's going to be Multi-Kill Clip, 
but I found that since it's so relaxed, it does great, and when I need it most versus a super, it comes through. And I've settled on that, so Vorpal is going to be my personal top PvP option, because I would try other roles as I was reviewing this. In every single game, the situation always came up, and all I could think was, I really wish I had my Vorpal one on, because I would leave them low, and 100%, they would have been down. For all-around utility, it's going to be Vorpal for me. In conclusion, Breach Light is worth your time, and when I get done reviewing all the Sundial weapons, I'm going to make a video ranking them all, and this one's going to be near the top, if not at the top. I think though, while you're grinding, and you're getting some rolls, play with them. See what works for you, because we're all different. In PvP, try a Vorpal weapon roll, because I'm telling you, it's one of the very few things you want to have when a super's coming right at you. It does well. I have really enjoyed Breach Light, and it's made my way into my personal rotation for both PvE and PvP. It's elite. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button, and if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. What do you think about Breach Light? How much have you used it? What's your favorite role? Let's talk about it down below. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.